Okay, here we are looking at the label maker that we're using to put the labels on our units. Um, for infantry, cavalry, and artillery, this uh, has proven to be really the best quick way of doing it as opposed to putting a, a strip of uh, white tape on the base and then uh, writing it by hand, which of course is always possible. The um, other option, instead of doing the white tape, would be to use the whiteout, uh, um, which is a film that you can press down and draw a cover, uh, or white area, onto the base label. This is what we started doing. These are actually very handy when you want to quickly erase something that's already been printed, so I still recommend getting these little guys because this is very cool and goes a long way. The other option would be to use uh, tape, which I don't have any samples of right now, but again, it's very a thin tape. It's um, appropriate to the size of the base label. Basically, what you do, you can see the keypad here. You enter in the information that you want to have printed out, and I think we already have uh, two lines set up, which we can show. So let's just go ahead and print that. Uh, actually, what we're going to do is let's add a line of space here, and then... Um, as far as I think this is going to be horse artillery second and then uh, horse artillery first sections. So basically it's just as simple as printing it and it comes out the side. The device is a little pricey uh, in the 20s or 30s but it's really worth it as you can see. Uh, what we're hoping on Sunday is that they actually produce a clear label. I think they do but it wouldn't really work for us because if it's clear label, it needs to be a white ink, and right now there is no such thing. Even if it was translucent, a white ink would be good, uh, so that way we don't have this white label on the bottoms of the bases. Uh, as you can see here, it's basically a two-line layout. If it was a single-line layout, the text would be uh, a lot larger and would fill the area. Um, this is good when you have a very thin area to uh, cover, um, or what you can do is if you want the lettering to be smaller, just set it up as if it's a two line, but print only uh, one line. For instance, in other words, in the, in, in the second line, just make the second line blank. I'll show you how we can do that. Um, basically, just go in to the device and erase the second line every time you press the delete, it moves you back. So here we have a two line layout, as you can tell by the little uh, carriage or the paragraph return mark, uh, but it's only going to print, I think, one line. So then it has a nice little convenient uh, snip right there. And basically, yeah, there you go. It's a one, it's a two line layout, but you're only printing one line of it, so the text is, is small. And so this represents the first, uh, first uh, battery, horse artillery, uh, second uh, 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 section. Uh, at least it is for the, uh, the horse and musket era for the Napoleonics that we're doing. Because every artillery piece represents actual gun sections of two guns each in real, uh, in real life. Uh, but when we get to the larger scale games, of course, uh, that single uh, a cannon uh, model would represent an entire battery of between four and six guns. So that is essentially it. Now the only thing is about this guy is that when you go to peel these off and stick them to your bases, you actually can't just you know find the separation of the peel off and uh, apply it. You actually peel off just a little bit. I'll show that. Just peel off a little bit. Okay, like a tab, a chad, if you will. And then peel off the other side because not having peeled it completely off facilitates peeling just bits of it. And now you're ready to peel them both off. And then you can cut it with the scissors uh, because our right now our base labels are not quite that tall. We try and make them as innocuous as possible. So with the scissors, and this, is, I think, is the thinnest, this is the thinnest uh, material you can buy. That is to say, the height of the label material is as small as we can get. I think it's a three-eighths of an inch, but anyway. So then there you go, and you can just 
well, when you learn how to cut with the scissors, you can cut it better than that. But anyway, um, so that's it. And then that just goes on the base uh, of the figures. Which is exactly what we see here. So um, this is just an example of a uh, f um, French Napoleonic uh, <clears throat> Hussar unit. And we have our strip of polystyrene plastic that we painted green on one side. This is basically the type of uh, sign material you see at a hardware store, like for sale or caution or danger or something of that nature. And then we just painted it and then we cut it into these little strips. So that's basically this, the, uh, the idea there. And then we just barely leave enough of it to uh, glue on to the back of the base. And generally we cut them a little bit bigger. This one's been cut a little too, uh, a little too, um, uh, not tall enough, I should say. It's wide enough, but it's not tall enough. But it should work okay, depending on how big it was of the label that we printed. But I think we printed a pretty thin label. So what we'll do is uh, we'll just get that label material and uh, put it on and show you how that works. Get some, uh, <clears throat> we just want to hot glue the back. Basically just uh, <clears throat> line, line up a bead of hot glue and then put a thin layer uh, on the back just enough to cover that small extra bit of the um, strip and then you just kind of press it on there and basically kind of just wait a, two seconds or so for it to dry. Move it around so you don't get it stuck to the surface in case there is some overflow and then just remove any extra that comes out and um, basically there you go. There you've got a nice... Uh, label area that uh, because it's hot glued on there doesn't come off very really, really easily um, <clears throat> and that's why, like I said we've been doing this now to all of our troops except the World War II ones uh, which we have uh, we've been experimenting with clear bases so there that, that brings up another issue about labeling on clear bases uh, but that's the squad level stuff so that's about the size of it and uh, then you're done and I'll get that label material and I'll stick it on there. I think it uh, it should fit. Hey, I never noticed that before. It looks like a rocket ship looking down from a rocket ship. Um, so the label material, I, as we saw earlier, when it comes out of the uh, um, machine, out of the uh, Dymo uh, Letra tag, uh, you can set it up for two lines or a single line. Now the single line is really uh, much larger as you would imagine. So if you really need to have some some big lettering than a single line, but otherwise just use the two line layout and uh, the text should be perfect. It's between a one, uh, one eighth or um, it's not just, uh, just less than uh, a quarter inch, just about a quarter inch is what we're seeing here, of course. But the uh, the plastic material itself, <coughs> excuse me, measures a little bit larger by about an eighth of an inch. So you can put that underneath the base. And so when you've got the split going on, the label, um, you're going to peel off the other part of it. And it was just about uh, coming off just like that. So you've got it... Uh, ready to to be applied to the base and as you can see that's the uh, camera on a makeshift little tripod and then we just apply it sometimes you have you can actually just wrap it uh, if it's too long you can just wrap it right around 